God will put individuals in our lives and show us how we ought to be the 10th chapter of the book of Mark and starting in verse number 23 and Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God and the disciples were astonished at his words but Jesus answereth again and saith unto them children how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God he had to make it very clear because some folk think that you're not supposed to have anything some folk think that you should always be poor and in the dumps and not enjoy the finer things of life so he made it very very clear he said how hard is it for a person that trusts in their riches he didn't say they couldn't have it but he said they trust in their riches He said to enter into the kingdom of God. And then he goes on to say it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. The rich man who trusts in his riches. And then and they were astonished. They said, well, God, who shall be saved? Because they were taught. If you are a child of God, that you should have something. And they said, well, who can be saved if that be the case? And he said unto them, with men, it is impossible with men it is impossible with men it is impossible but not with God for with God all things are possible which means I could be rich and make it to heaven because I don't trust in my riches I trust in God just in case somebody don't understand riches some people like living the way they live. Some people like living poor. Yes, Some people don't want to do any better. Some people think that what they're doing right now is, is good enough. Well, there's a whole lot of people that don't think this is good enough for them. There are some people want to do better. Some people want more than what they have. And there's nothing wrong with wanting more. And, and I just want to drop this little nugget in there. Don't let anybody despise your blessing. They didn't give it to you. And they ain't going to help you keep it. But you enjoy the luxuries of God with your salvation. God said you will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. It will be so much you don't even have room enough to receive it. And he said... Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. You haven't given up anything that God won't bless you in return. And this is the part I want to read. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that have left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels if you go leave anything make sure it's for the gospel's sake 
but he shall receive this is your blessing and a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lads get ready for this with persecutions And in the world to come, eternal life. Get ready to be persecuted. Get ready to be persecuted. And I want to just talk because the death, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ was not just so that you could remain in the gutter. His dying or his birth and his deliverance up into glory was so that you can live an abundant life. But there are those that get a little fearful about it. Now I'm going to tell you right now, he says, you're going to be persecuted. Yes. Now, you could double back to that scripture and say that you got to leave some folk alone. For he said, no man having left mother and father, sister or brother, houses and land, and followed after him for the gospel's sake, that he won't give you all of these things, but you're going to suffer for it. You're going to go through for it. Now, how are you going to go through? And I, I, it ain't a long message because y'all have already got the text. Right. Some of you are afraid to challenge yourself into the things of God. When God make a decree, God's decree must come to pass. His teachings don't change because we're in a different dispensation or we're in a different era. It doesn't change. When God decree a thing, it's going to come to pass. When God make an emphatic statement concerning our lives, you can rest assured that God is going to see you through it. You can't leave behind people that God said get rid of. Now let me tell you why we get rid of people. Because there's always a negative folk that say I don't think you should do that. I wouldn't do that if I was you. And if you know that you're moving for the gospel's sake. What is the gospel? The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you are there to perform and to do what the gospel say to effect in the lives of individuals and show individuals that change that you will not lose anything when you pray when you are giving up everything for God's sake doesn't matter who like you let me tell you something people get upset because they see where I live but people don't know what I went through to get to where I am And people don't know what I'm still going through to stay where I am. If I, was, if, if I was depending on man, I would be living in the ghetto. I would be, well, they done tore down the projects where I live. Blew them up so I can't go back there. And we can't go back to Broom Street because it ain't there anymore. The Broom Streets are torn down and we... We can't live there any longer. But if it was up to people, I would be where they are. But one thing about me, I don't look to the left or to the right for people. I look straight up. Because God is the only one that cares enough about you that will turn the heart of the banker into your hands. 
The heart of the king is in God's hands like rivers of water. He turns it whithersoever he will. At will, God will do it. God will do it at will. God can't help you if you don't follow. But if you're willing to give up all to follow him, God will bless you. He says not only will he give us a hundredfold now in this time. I couldn't understand a lot of things that my father used to say when he would say, you keep going girl. Everybody was a girl. You were 40 years old. You were still a girl. Because when older people get older, they call you girl and they call you boy. They don't care how old you are. He would say, girl, he said, you just keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't let anybody upset you. Because I used to get upset when people would talk about me. And I would say, well, what did I do to them? Why are you mad at me? And I'm living in the projects with no car, taking a cab to church. And walking when we didn't have money. What did I do to you? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And then, when God bless, they still mad. How you gonna be mad at me and ain't got nothing? Why are you mad? Yes, you want what I have. Have Have you ever been? Let me talk a little bit first. Have you ever been in a relationship and they tell you, I don't think that one is right for you. Or you shouldn't be in that relationship. You, you know, they ain't, they ain't right for you. But you don't have to live with them. This is my relationship. And, and, and because it's my relationship, I determine what's good for me. Because what you think is good may not be good for me. Many of us could attest to that. Because we pick out who we want for our kids. Instead of let's say, well, let God select for me. And I know, because I've been there. I've been there. And you know, and I often tell you, my husband was not my first choice. But he was the best choice. He was the best choice because he's good for me. He may not, he won't, you may like him and you may want him even with his oxygen, but he ain't good for you. <laughs> he ain't good for you, he good for me. And if you have any kind of relationship at all, the one that's with you is good for you. But you've got to work it so that it won't mess you up. Oh, I worked it, girl. I worked it. You know how I worked it? I came down off my high horse, living in the projects on my high horse. humble myself I humble myself anybody that's around me for any long length of time long period of time they know I came a long way but you gotta learn how to work it it ain't just gonna happen cause you both saved but you gotta work it and there's a time when you have to really be strong the stronger force if you're gonna get anywhere in life I just want to share this little piece. My husband and I were in philosophy class together. And, and, and he wanted to hang out of class, but I went to class. And 
when it came time for our take home exam he thought that I was going to do his exam I told him ain't no way I don't remember whether he flunked that class and had to take it over or not but I know one thing I didn't do his exam it was his grade it wasn't my grade it was his grade it was his life sometimes you have to let them go for it and the, but he graduated and he got an excellent GPA he didn't make a, he didn't make a, a, a 3.5 but he made a 3.0 but I had to let him do his own work sometimes you have to know when to do and when not to do all right, that, that's just a piece They're right there. But anytime you want to do better, you always have critics. Somebody's always ready to criticize you. Why? This is good. No, it's not. This is good for you, but it ain't good for me. So what I did, I worked. I worked it. I knew I wanted to do something else. I worked it. I worked it. I worked my job. I had a job. I worked 26 years on my job. I saved my money. And my husband had, he, he was able to get um, a GI loan. And he said, oh, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. While he was talking, I was saving. Right. And one day, he kept stitching off the money, going to the bank, taking the money out. One day, I went to the bank, and they said, I said, how much is there? I said, oh, I'm taking this money out of here. I left $25 in the bank. So when he went to get the money, they said, you only have $25 in here. He said, what? He could get home fast enough and call me on my job. You what? He said, Carol, Carol, what happened to the money? I said, I moved it. I moved it. And I know he don't mean mind talking because we share good stuff. And I said, I moved it. Because we're going to move. Prudential offered me this mortgage, offered me a move package. And he offered me the move package at a very, very low interest rate that I could not refuse. It was even lower than the GI loan. I said, I got to do this. It was difficult, but I sacrificed. And I worked. And I worked a part-time job. And I said, we're going to move. I worked overtime. We worked overtime for one solid year. I mean, overtime after overtime. And I would get up early in the morning for the part-time job. Before Sunday school. Five o'clock in the morning, go to the key punch place. Because I was a key punch operator at the time. I would go there and work until Sunday school. And then I leave there and go to Sunday school, go to morning service, and come back so I could get my eight hours of time in. I worked it. And when I finish, I, I'm, I'm going to bring y'all to this point here, but I can't talk about you because I don't know you. I can only talk about me. And I worked. And when I moved the money and we got the money, I went to look, I, I, I went to the real estate agent. I said, well, Irvin, where are we going? Where are we going? He said, oh, I'll let you know, I'll let you know. I got in my car and I drove all the way down here to the real estate person by myself. After I had talked to my pastor, because you know I always shared everything with my pastor, talked to him to see how he felt about it. He said, yeah, girl, you're doing the right thing. You go ahead. But what about Irvin? I said, I don't know, Elder. He working. I'm going. 
I went on and went to the real estate. One day he was home. He said, Kyle, the real estate agent called. I said, oh, yeah. He said, did you go to looking for a house? I said, yes, I did. He said, what, 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 where, you, where you going? I said, you want to come? My first house we bought in Howell. My mortgage on that house. Anybody been to my house in Howell? My, house, my mortgage was $229.77. With a third of an acre. But I was determined I was going to get a house. And even when we moved, I worked. I was, y'all, y'all wondered, you know, I'm going here and I'm going there. I'm going to preach. If they give me $50, I'm putting that money in the bank. Whatever they give me, it's going in the bank. I said, because I'm going to work this thing. I had to take the initiative to work. Some folk don't want to work, but that's up to them. But if you want anything in life, you go work for it. They always look for a handout, but they never look into work. And I wasn't going to put my husband through no trauma. He out of the house all the time. I didn't need to come home sometime. So I worked. So he could come home sometime. And we worked. And when, and I was just about finished paying for that house. I owed $10,000 on that house in Howard. I would have been mortgage free. But the Lord said to me, you got to move. And I mean, don't you think I didn't kick up my heels about it? Because I had a little mortgage. And my mortgage went up. I don't know how many times. Irving could tell you. One, two, three, four, five. It's up there. But it's almost paid. Because I know how to manage. Because the Lord said. That he would bless me. And the Lord said. He would add no sorrow. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and out of no sorrow. So we went and we finished. And even now, I work. I work. Because I know what I need to do. I'm 66 years old. I can make as much money as I want. And they won't take my Social Security money. Ha, ha, ha. As a matter of fact, I got a raise. Because <laughs> I worked. You can't work. You, when you work, you pay into Social Security. And you got to make sure when you retire, that Social Security is enough to take care of you. My husband worked 28 years. Still was working. Still working right now. Doing his accounting work. But he work so that the blessings of the Lord can make rich and we don't have and add no sorrow. I'm saying all of this because if you are going to enjoy the benefits of God, you got to work along with his principle. There are principles to salvation and those principles must be kept according to God. Just because I have got Social Security, it doesn't mean I don't pay my tithes now. I collect Social Security, but I pay my tithes. I pay, I pay my offering. And anybody at this offering table that take any kind of offering to tell you, I don't put no little bit of money in the offering. I don't know where and how God pours out, but I ain't even worried about it. Just give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. But he pours out. Not only does he pour out, he said, and I will give you an overflow, and the overflow, I help the saints. I don't help the sinner, I help the saints. He says, I will not forget about you. He says, if you give up 
all to follow me. I will give you a hundredfold in this present world, but you're going to be lied on. You're going to be cheated. People are going to call you a crook. They're going to call you everything but a child of God. They say you robbing folk. They'll say you a cheater. You must play the number. You get money from bingo. And I'm not a bingo player. But people will persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for his sake. But the Bible says great is your reward in heaven. God can't lie concerning your life. He's a God of the impossibility. It sometimes it looks like it's not going to happen. But God is a God of the impossibility. You tell me how God can do something that you have no, re no knowledge of. It is incomprehensible in our little finite mind how God can work for us overnight, instantaneously. I go for something on Friday. The man told me I needed $10,000 and God wouldn't even let Tanya Ball sleep. He worked all night. You could barely get the five. And he said get ten. But she, when I walked out of here. And went to the real estate office. I had my ten thousand dollar down. God is a God of the impossibility. I don't want to talk spiritual. But it is spiritual. I want to talk natural. Because we cannot comprehend spiritual things. Until we understand what's going on in the natural realm. said I spoke to you in parallel because you could not understand the spiritual if you understand the natural walk in the natural then you'll begin to understand spiritual couldn't understand how $54.50 a week could multiply into something that happened for me I paid $5 off that $50 and uh, God allowed it to grow and to multiply yeah, yeah. so that it became something more than what I had and I was able to buy what I wanted God is trying to show us the natural thing so he gives a parable he says that the corn of wheat grow into the ground Underneath the surface, you can't see anything going on. But underneath the surface of that corn, there is something sprouting called roots. <laughs> and sometimes we want instantaneous blessing. But you can't get an instant blessing when you haven't planted for anything for it to grow. So he plants a seed. But in the midst of the seed that had been planted, the farmer went to bed. And when he went to bed and he got up the next day, he knew he had planted good seed. But when he woke up, there were some tares among the wheat. And he asked the question, from whence cometh this? He said, the enemy have done this. When God plants something in your heart and tell you, I'm going to bless you, you don't worry about how. You don't even worry about whether or not you can do it. You can't do it, but God will do it. You don't let a negative person talk into your mind. You don't make enough. You're too, you're too, you, you, you just can't make it. The devil is a liar. He said, I, there is nothing too hard for me. 
There is nothing impossible for me. There is nothing that I cannot do. If I command it to be so, it shall be done. And God's command is that you shall be blessed. There's no reason for you to even think about not being blessed. I will turn in your favor at any given moment. I will cause men to bless you. I will cause men to give it to your bosom. God says there's nothing too hard for us. If you leave all to follow him, there's some folk you just got to drop. There's some folk that's going to lay on you and lean on you and depend on you for the rest of their lives. Some folk you just have to turn from. They may not like it, but you just say, I'm sorry. But you're holding me down. The Bible says that you got to lay aside every weight. And those are weights in your blessing. God can't bless you because you got the weights hanging on to you and you got to loose those weights. Drop them. Get rid of them. They're not helping you. They're not blessing you to go higher. You're just keeping you on a lateral. All you're doing is a lateral move. Every job you want to get a higher level. But they keep moving you laterally. So that the same salary you was making five years ago, you're still making today. Because you're going, you're moving, but you're lateral. When are you going to wake up and realize that God is trying to take me higher? I, I got to say this today. God opened up so many doors for us. And y'all act just like you don't even see it. God opened up a door for us to sing with Karen Clark on the program. Do you know this is a well-renowned, this is a renowned artist. God opened up a door for us to be uh, visible to the audience to sing before Karen Clark sheared. And the half the choir didn't even show up. Didn't even show up. Now I wasn't there because I, I, you know, if I was home, I would have gone. Thank you. Because they still want to live where they are. They don't want to get up. They don't want to get up. They're lazy, irresponsible, undependable, and want God to bless them. God can't work when you're irresponsible, when you're not dependable, when you're all about you and not about the things of God. God is trying to expose you. You complain about everything. How you know your man ain't there? You just missed your man. You missed a good man. But now you want to hang around with the vagabond men. God is trying to bring us higher, take us to another dimension. And we're looking at, I'm too tired. Who gonna pick me up? I don't have any money. Nobody asked you for that. They didn't ask you for any money. They just said, come. You know us. We get to where we want to go when we want to go there. And God will even touch the heart of a person you don't even think care anything about you and say, well, I'll give you a ride. Take my car. 
do what you have to do God will help you there is something that there's a place in God that God is trying to get us each and every one of us you're too tired but you're not tired to do what you want to do you can't depend on you because you a procrastinator God can't do he can't fix your condition because you are depressed about it you're depressed and God can't help you God said cast all your cares upon me before because I care about you he said if I look out for the birds for the fowls of the air don't you know I'm going to look out for you? I'm going to take care of you. They toil not. The lilies of the field. They toil not. Neither do they spin. He said if, if I could take care of them. I'll take care of you. God is saying. Sure you're going to be talked about. You might as well get ready for it. They don't talk about you. What do you care? Let them keep talking. You keep doing it. You keep getting your blessing. Because the more they talk, the more God going to bless you. God going to show up in your situation. He going to let the enemy know you can talk all you want to. While you talking, I'm going to continue to bless them. When God gets ready to do something, you don't have to worry is it possible? You don't have to worry. Is it possible? I have, sometimes I tell people, "What? What are you talking about?" I, I turn in my nose up too. What? What are you talking about? Well, I can't do. I said, "You don't do anyway." God does it for us. God takes care of everything for us. You just have to be in God. Give up and let God. Give up and allow God to do it. God can do whatever we ask him to do. But we have to give up. But remember, when you be talked about and people are trying to put you down, you got to ignore them. You have to ignore them. Because those are the tares that's growing up with the wheat. You're the wheat and they're the tares. So the tares are trying to tear you down. Choke the life out of you and keep on moving. I want to say this also that the tears will connect with another tear to choke life out of your situation they'll make it up in their mind oh we gonna kill this we gonna cut their lights out and we'll make them feel bad you don't let anybody make you feel bad about nothing that God do for you when God is doing something great in your life, you don't let anybody make you feel bad about it. You know, as Pastor Hattie said, you know who you are and you know who you're not. Don't let anybody tear you down. He says, if you give up for the gospel's sake, Read it right there. No man having left mother, father, sister, brother, houses, and land for my sake and the gospel's sake. He said, I will give you all of these things, but you can expect persecution. You can expect trouble. And when you, you know that trouble is coming, you do what you need to do to gird yourself. Gird yourself in truth. People will say all kinds of stuff 
They, they say you think you're better than anybody. How you gonna think you're better than somebody and you grow up in the ghetto? Just because you got a little place that's a little better than the ghetto. Just because you came up out of the hood. It doesn't make you better. It just means that God has given you the desires of your heart. There's an old saying that we often use. You could take the person out of the ghetto. But you can't take the ghetto out the person. You could take them out of the country. But you can't get the country out of the person. They're going to still talk country after 40 years. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I listen to my baby. She ain't grow up in the country. She grew up in the city. But sometimes she... Something she says so country. I said, girl, where you get that from? <laughs> Some things are in us and we don't realize they're in us. But we need to take inventory of what's in us in order that we could come up a little higher. I'm almost done with this with this text. Because there's a lot more I want to say. But I went to the hospital. We were in the hospital with Elder Orr. Everybody know Elder Orr. She's an orator. She's very articulate. And she is so well versed. She stunned the doctors. They stood back and say, Where did you get your information? She's on their level. Her mind is sharp. And she speaks the ter terminology that they speak. And one day she said to them, tell me in layman's term. And they told her in layman term, in terms that, you know, we could understand and you know what she did? She turned it around. She said, oh, you mean such and such and such in clinical terminology and stunned them to no end because she's well-versed and articulate in who she is. I love to hear her speak because she knows what she's talking about. She digs into the heart of the people because she's been there. She's done that. And so she's able to get to the heart of the people and to the meat of what she's saying. She didn't get to where she is because she was huh, hanging around with the hoodlums. She got to where she is because she hung around with God. She stayed with him. And she's doing exceptionally well. They are stunned at how well she's doing. There is nothing too hard for God. I told her, daughter, don't you bring her no, she gonna walk up them stairs to her room. I said, don't you bring her no bed down here. She gonna walk to her room because she's a fighter. And we gonna be there because she's coming out of this. She's very sharp. She does not have a limp. Her leg is weak, but they're strengthening it. They all, even the therapists became very positive. See, we've known Elder Or. I've known her for almost 60 years. So I know that her speech was a little slurred. She spoke so well, they couldn't even hear the slur. Because that's how well she's doing. Whenever God makes us a promise, it may not seem like very much, but she got sick for a reason. But I tell you one thing, she gonna listen to us now. Because
because she realizes that you can't do what you want to do and think that you're going to get away with it. You can't do what you want to do and think that you're going to get away because it ain't going to work. All of you whom God has chosen is not going to come to you because you pray and fast. But you got to get on God's side. When you get on God's side, God will work in your behalf. You got to follow after God. Everybody stand it. I appreciate your attentiveness. We can always get away, but we have to give God our best. And God will give us his best. Anyone today desires to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins that you might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You could come if you desire to be baptized in the name of Jesus. If not, we're going to ask everyone to bow your heads. I'm not calling a prayer line. Heavenly and most gracious Father, we thank you this morning for allowing us to minister to your people in layman's terms. I appreciate the fact that out of all you could have chosen, you chose me. Out of all that you could have ministered to hear this word, you chose us. God, and I cannot thank you enough. I'm ever so grateful that I know whatever it is you are it's not impossible for you to perform it so God I'm looking for the performance of your word through my present life not in the hereafter God and I want to thank you for shaking off shedding off and building up according to your word I say thank you and I praise you and I bless you and I magnify you. In Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. Everybody put your hands together and give God thanks. <laughs>